I'm Caleb Brimage, and here are the top five ways you can support First Trial Let this week. Number five, on Wednesday, May 25th at 11 a.m., all who are 55 years and older are invited to Golden Classics. This month's entertainer is singer and impersonator Rhonda Medina, singing the hits of Patsy Cline. See the E! News for more information. Number four, step back in time at Jerusalem Marketplace. This year's Vacation Bible School is June 26th through the 30th. We will explore what it was like to walk with Jesus during Bible times. You will want to register to attend or to volunteer as this will be an adventure of a lifetime. See the e-news or the website for registration information. Number three, VBS donations are needed. There are much needed items to help us have a cost-effective VBS this year. Please see the e-news or the website for the list of needed items. You can bring your donations to the box located by the missions closet outside the worship center. Number two, enjoy a night out while the kids get to play. The next parents' night out is scheduled for May 21st, 5 to 10 p.m. For more information or to register, contact Clancy Lucero or Denise Hubbs at pno at firstrowlet.org. And our number one announcement is, Sunday, May 22nd, we will have one service at 10 a.m. so we can worship as one church body. Please plan to attend as we celebrate this year's confirmation class as they take their vows together. Those are our announcements. Have a great week. Good morning. Good morning. It is wonderful to see each and every one of you gathered here and to know that we are also joined by several online through the wonder of technology. It's a great way to be connected not only through technology, but through God's spirit as we have the chance to worship today. I want to welcome each of you to this service, especially if you were a guest. I want to extend a special welcome. It is really good to have you here today. If you have not already, if all of you would take just a minute to register your attendance, it is important to us to know that each and every one of you are here. And so you can text your name, the number, if just one of you in your worshiping group wants to send in the information, just put the number that is worshiping together to 469-314-9951. If you're worshiping online, you can just add the word online after that so that we know which worship community you're joining us from. And if you were a guest, you can also include the word guest after your name so that that will alert us and we can reply with some information about our church. Just give you a little more information about who we are and ways that you can learn about us. It is a wonderful time to be the church together, to have so many things happening. As you came into the worship center, you saw the senior boards getting to beginning to get set up this morning. This is Senior Sunday. It is a time when we as a church celebrate those who are about to embark on the next chapter of their journey. Some of these seniors have grown up here in the church and later during the worship service, you'll have a chance to hear from some of them. They're going to actually be recognized in the second service, but we have lots of opportunities to um, lift them up in this service as well. And then while we are uh, mentioning the special events in the life of our youth. Not only is today Senior Sunday, but next week is Confirmation Sunday. We've had five young ones that have been going through confirmation all year long and will be confirmed next Sunday. So we will have one service as a church so that we can combine both of the worship services and surround them at 10 o'clock. So I hope that you will join us for that special time next week. Let us today worship together.
comfortable and join me in our call to worship. What mysteries there are in God's world. We, so sophisticated, stand in awe at the wonders of the natural world. We look at the tiniest of seeds and wonder what will happen. From that small seed will grow a large shrub. Although we consider our gifts to be small and insignificant, God will use our gifts in miraculous ways. Let us praise the God of small seeds and mighty power. Join me together as we affirm that very faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Would you please be seated?
Shelter in the time of storm. He's my shelter. In the time of the affirmations of faith and proclamations through hymns that we sing that remind us when we worship of who we pray to and to whom we pray. Putting these things together, we lift up our prayers and concerns, our joys, our celebrations and our worries, and we put them at the feet of a risen Savior, our G Jesus Christ. As we pray today, we lift up the prayer concerns that are on our prayer list, those names that have been listed and the concerns that are shared in our community. As we lift up those concerns we lift up today uh, with sympathy with Kay Tapp and the family and the passing of her mother, Betty Ann Williams. We also share and lift up with prayer for the community of Buffalo, New York, and the families of the victims of the events that occurred yesterday there. Will you join with me and let us with one faith go to the Lord in prayer. At your feet, O Lord, we come to you. We proclaim your great name and we celebrate your love for us. As the spring air warms us, we hear the birds singing, we witness the flowers blooming, nature grows around us and sings its praise to you. And in it all, we feel and know your presence that is always with us. And yet, O oh Lord, it feels like this week has just been on repeat when we read the news of violence amidst our world and conflicts. Then we come to events like this weekend where we have another moment where hate and evil take center stage rather than your love and your grace. We pray this day that your love and grace would stand tall among all other news and all other stories in our community and in our world. We especially pray for the victims in New York. We pray that you would comfort the victims and their families. But we pray that you would also comfort our hearts. May we see you, hear you, and feel your loving presence all around us. Lord, we confess that there are moments that we are not always aware of the world around us. We rather keep to our inner circle and rather not see the needs of those who can serve, we can serve with your love and kindness, sharing grace in the ungracious places. Help us to remember the teachings of Jesus, who came and showed us the ways to love and forgive ourselves and one another, as we pray the prayer he taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth, as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us, not temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. celebrate our seniors this this day um, being part of the church has been an part, instrumental part of their upbringing and their faith journey 
So I invite you to join with me. Some of our seniors are going to be telling, sharing a little bit of their faith and why that's been important to them. Biddingfield, I'm graduating from Rowlett High School. And next year, I'm going to go going to Texas A&M to study ecology and conservation biology. My name is Alex Cormier. I'm graduating from Garland High School. And after graduation, I plan to go to the Savannah College of Art and Design uh, to study film and television. My name is Connor Dixon. I'm graduating from uh, Poteet High School. And I'm going to UT Austin. And I'm going to major in geological sciences. So I came in when I was five years old, and I've been here ever since, and it, it's meant the world to me. I know a lot of friends because of this church. Growing up in the church has brought me like some lifelong friends. I've been with the two other seniors that we have this year and several of the younger kids since I was in the nursery. So having those people around me really helped me get through church and school and just life in general. The church just really like helps you like be yourself and find yourself. My best experience is probably going to Mexico for spring break. I never realized what poverty kind of really looked like. And while I don't necessarily know, like I still won't truly understand it unless I'm in it. I kind of have a better idea. You just don't realize what other people are going through. The first Mexico mission trip that we got to go on was just really it's very impactful for me because it was really eye-opening, first of all. It just really changed my life. My favorite experiences have definitely been the choir trips because we've been able to touch a lot of people's hearts because we go to elderly homes and uh, sing to them. I think it brings a lot of people happiness. When I was just starting off in the youth group, some of the older kids, like they, were, they had their own cliques and they didn't necessarily talk to the new sixth graders or seventh graders. So now that I'm in this position, I like to always make sure that the younger kids are with us. They're playing games with us. They're cracking jokes. We're all together. And it makes them, I feel like it makes them want to come back to church and like, because they feel included. And I want to take that with me in the future because I always want to make people feel like they're wanted. I kept my friends close to me out when uh, everybody was online during the COVID outbreak. We were all in quarantine, but we still stayed together. And I don't know if I'd still be here if I hadn't stayed close with my friends. The one thing I would take with me is uh, just how you, everyone should be included all around you. And like, you can always find a friend no matter where you go. And you, when you're the one person in the room, you should always like, everyone's been that one person. So you should seek out that one person and make them feel welcome and be comfortable. The way I'd say thank you is thank you for letting me use as my talents. Uh, I got to run the slides. I also got to run the cameras uh, for live streaming service. And I just want to say thank you because I don't think I would have gotten that ex experience ever, anywhere else. Thank you for being one of the biggest parts of my life since my entire life. Um, this church has brought me, like I said, all of m like 90% of my friends so many great memories, so many experiences that I wouldn't have had anywhere else. I would say um, thank you for giving me a place to be myself and just thank you for all these wonderful experiences I wouldn't have had if I was not at the church every weekend. And just thank you for everything you've done and I really appreciate it. Good morning. Um, today's reading is from the uh, book of Mark, chapter 4, verses 26 through 29. He also said, the kingdom of God is if someone would scatter seeds on the ground and would sleep and rise night and day, and the seeds would sprout and grow, and he does not know how. The earth produces of itself, first the stalk, then the head, then the full grain in the head. But when the grain is ripe, at once he goes out with his sickle, because the harvest has come. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thank you, God. 
Join me in prayer this morning. Let's pray. Gracious God, may the words of my mouth, the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable to you. God, you are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. So we are spending a few weeks in the gospel of Mark, specifically in chapter four, looking at several of these parables in a row that talk about seeds. If you were here for that first week, you know, we talked about the abundance of the one who, who gives us that, that seed in the word of truth, the, the good news of the kingdom of God. And so we keep this vase of seeds here on the altar to remember where that truth comes from the sower of the seeds. And so we're continuing to move through several of these parables. We'll have one today and one next week as well. And I want to point out that we spent two weeks on the parable of the sower because it was in two different parts. But this one that we look at today is a a distinct different parable. In fact, there's actually another parable about the lamp under the bushel in between there. And so I want us to hear with clean ears what these words that we just heard Chris read this morning, what they have to say to us and try not to bring details from the other parables in. Because what Jesus is doing here is telling different parables with distinct details to help us understand and to point us to different important aspects of the kingdom of God. And so I think it's interesting that several of these parables are found in multiple gospels. You know, there's, there's four different gospels, four different people tell about the ministry and teaching of Christ. And oftentimes we'll hear the same story, the same incident, the same teaching in this case through parables in different gospels. But this one that we read today is unique to the gospel of Mark. I'm not sure why. Lots of different reasons it it could have happened. Um, It's a pretty simple parable. You heard it's just a few verses long. And uh, maybe the others thought it was a boring teaching. I don't know. If it was a Hollywood script, it probably wouldn't have been picked up by Netflix for like a five-night miniseries. There's not a lot of action here, right? But it has something important to say to us, an important truth. I think it's one of actually the most profound lessons that we find in these parables. And so I want to remind you, just like we talked about in week one, this idea of hearing is important. That first parable was bookended with this reminder to hear. And so I want us to open our ears to hear what this parable has to say. I did a little word search in my NRSV version, and just in chapter four, Jesus uses that word here 11 times. He has something important to say to us about the kingdom of God through these parables. And so I hope that we will open our ears and our hearts to hear what that is uniquely in each of our own lives. This parable is about the mystery of growth. It is the soil itself that is said to cause the growth. In in verse 26, automate is the word that is used, and it means by itself. It's saying this happens automatically. The, The farmer doesn't have a lot of influence in this. It is the soil and the seed that do their work on their own. It's interesting because the the farmer in a way may seem a little ignorant or seem to just not care about this process. He doesn't, he seems a little irrelevant to this story. There's not a big focus on him, but I think he has something important to model to us. Before we jump to this growth uh, progression here, I want to look at the opening sentence that Chris read. So make sure we don't miss that. Jesus says, the kingdom of God is as if. And he goes on to explain something about the kingdom of God through this parable. That's the purpose of these words, to tell us something about the kingdom of God. The focus isn't on the farmer, the one who spreads the seed, but in these verses, it is on the seed, this growth, the soil's role in the growing of the seed. And this progresses pretty much as would have been expected. Listen to what verse 28 says as it describes this process. The earth produces first of the stalk, then the head, then the full grain in the head. Once the grain is ripe, it is ready for the harvest. 
you can picture kind of a, an image of, of, of a little sprout coming up and growing. This, this growth happens so gradually sometimes we don't even notice. Think about your grass growing in your yard. You don't sit there and, and notice a change, but, but day by day or maybe week by week, we notice that there is a change in that. But it happens gradually over time, doesn't it? There's seasons where that growth happens really fast. There's seasons where that's slower. And there's seasons when it seems to not be having any change at all. Because what is happening is deep below the surface. But we know that in time, that cycles back and starts to grow really fast. Anyone that has to care for yards knows that this is the reality, right? Early on in our marriage, that is with the yard. That's one of the first places that we made what felt like an extravagant expenditure because we decided that there were lots of conversations about how long the grass was in the yard. I seem to notice that growth in a different way than Chris noticed that growth. And so we decided early on that was worth it to pay the teenager that lived a couple houses down to at least make sure the front yard was uh, mowed, even if the fence around the backyard let the, the rest of that miracle of growth be shown to our family. But it's something that just happens on its own in, in certain seasons. It grows faster than we expect, Right. There's no explaining it. I love that verse 27 talks about the farmer. And it, it just states flat out that the farmer has no idea how this happens. I don't think it means that he wasn't smart enough. It isn't telling us that he didn't have the opportunity to study agriculture or, or to write his dissertation on this process. It is just explaining the facts about what happens. Even today, with all of our gained knowledge in the area of science, there's still some mystery present, isn't there? That's what we're supposed to grasp in this passage, this mystery that is claimed here. Our scientific advances allow us to thoroughly describe the process, but how the seed turns into a full-blown plant is still mind-boggling for me. The seed will sprout and grow but the farmer doesn't really know how. And the fact that he doesn't know doesn't bother this farmer. He exhibits full trust in this process. He's not anxious about knowing all the details. He has absolute trust in the power of the soil and the seed. Another element that's present here is the fact that there's a kind of patience that is necessary on the part of the farmer. He seems to take on kind of a, a stance of observation, of, of quiet noticing, an awareness of what is happening. I can even imagine that he has maybe an underlying appreciation for the earth and for what is happening, noticing that the power is in the soil and the seed. It does not require a lot of human work. For a simple parable, there's just layer upon layer. You've heard me list some of, I think, the important truths here about trust, about patience. But I think that what we just claimed is probably the most important truth I want to bring out this week. It was definitely the most important thing that this parable had to say to me. And that is the fact that it is not about what the farmer did, right? Right? That growth is, is pointed to, that mystery of growth, and it happened without a lot of human work. This parable follows that parable of the sower. And in that parable, we are kind of pointed to that we are the ones that are to, to spread the seeds. We are active in making sure that the ground is ready. And I think Jesus is, follows that with this teaching for an important reason here. It comes along to make sure that we don't get things backwards. There's no mistaking who's in charge. This parable doesn't leave us thinking that it is by our action that the growth happens. Isn't that the way it is with the kingdom of God? Think about it. Isn't that the truth of the way that the seeds are planted in our lives, in this congregation, in the world around us? We like to think that we have the power, that we are active in manipulating, in maneuvering, in managing the production. 
But the truth is, it isn't about us. You know what? God can do this without us. The kingdom of God grows because of its inherent God-given nature, not because of the effort of the custodians. Let me say that a different way. God's kingdom is going to be revealed. It's going to continue to grow with or without me, with or without all of us. We are invited to be a part of this process. We have an important part to play. But the fact is God's power is greater than any of us. We are not necessary for its fulfillment. God is already at work. What a joy in hearing that truth. This parable reminds us that as God's purposes emerge, this process is both without our, it's beyond our full understanding and it is beyond our control. This is the miracle of our faith. Think of your own growth. Aren't there times when it it seems like that, that grass where there's just nothing happening and then all of a sudden you'll have a moment where you realize God has been active in important ways that you didn't even realize. That happens in the church as well. There's seasons like what we're feeling here where the momentum just picks up and you just realize that the spirit is alive in an important way and you just can't explain it. It's the mystery of faith, the mystery of God's action, the mystery of the ways that God is at work, whether we realize it or not. In one of my roles at a previous church, I went around and talked to several different churches in the area that we're experiencing a lot of growth, either in numbers or just in in thriving in important ways. This wasn't just Methodist churches, but other denominations, Baptists and Presbyterians and non-denominational churches and all kinds of churches. And I, I talked to some of these pastors and asked them about their growth. And I found one thing that they all had in common when I asked them to talk about this. They couldn't identify anything that they had done in this process. They did describe the ways that they were changed in it. They named the way that they were living into their faith in fearless ways. They named the ways that they could just almost reach out and touch the spirit that was among them. A a stance of trusting, noticing, believing, depending on God. Leaning on the truth of the good news. Living as if it is good news, right? The kingdom of God is being revealed in our midst, not because of our work, but because of God's action. That's why I love talking about this on Senior Sunday. We got to hear from some of our seniors, to hear about the ways that this church has made a difference in their journey, to hear about the ways that that connection, not only in the youth group, but with so many of you that taught them in Sunday school classes and vacation Bible school that had an influence in their lives, it makes a difference. God used those channels to plant those seeds, that growth that all of a sudden you wake up one day and say, wow, look, they're young adults. They're heading off into this next chapter of life. And somehow God used us to help in that growth. It's, it's a, an awesome privilege to be a part of that. But it is not what we do. It is what God does through us. Not too long ago, I had the opportunity to connect with a a dear friend of mine. We were catching up on how things were going. She was in a place where everything was just feeling a little more balanced in her life. And and she was just in, in a really good spot. And I asked her about that. And she shared something interesting with me. She said, right now, what I've learned to do is to do my best to live out my call, not my can. I said, what? Tell me more about that. Live out my call, not my can. She went on to share how she realized how much of her life was spent demonstrating what she can do, what she has the ability to do. And that was wearing her out. She's living out her call rather than her can. Listening to the places where she is called to invest energy, spending less time trying to get wrapped up in in improving her abilities and what she accomplishes in doing, doing, doing. It quickly can become all about us, she said. This parable reminds us that God is at work, not because of us, 
but sometimes through us. It is a privilege, as I say, to recognize the times that that happens, to recognize the times that we are a channel of that love that is spread into the world in our own lives and in the church as a whole. What I hear in these passages is a call for us to change our focus. What would it be like to to move our focus from excelling and excellence and effort to that of expectation, to open our hearts to have expectant hope for the ways that God is at work around us, especially in those times where we feel disconnected It's so easy to to kind of get lost in that place of darkness when things are difficult in our lives. And that's the hope that I think is present in this passage here. It doesn't promise that this is a linear progression. It doesn't promise that we're going to see God's kingdom in, in different ways in 15 years from now than we did 15 years ago. It's a process that sometimes we don't fully understand. But it calls us to open our eyes and our hearts to recognize God's power in our midst, even when things are difficult, our faith gives us something to cling to. As Easter people were reminded of that, right? This hope, this possibility, this new life, God is at work. This parable calls us to recognize God's action in our world, to be attentive to the ways that God's kingdom is coming alive right here in our midst. And to be filled with hope for the complete fulfillment of what was started in Jesus. Praise be to God for what has been planted here among us. How does our garden grow? We can't explain it. But we can claim the one that grows this garden of faith here among us. May we have expectant hearts. May we notice the kingdom around us. And may we point others to the ways that is growing. Will you pray with me? Gracious God, we give thanks for the ways that you are active in growth, not only in our own individual faith lives, but also in growing the kingdom of God in our midst. It is an awesome privilege to to be a participant in this, to join into your mission. God, I just pray that you would use us Help us realize that it is not because of our own effort, because of the things that we do, but it is you working through us. To you, God, we give all the glory. In your name we pray. Amen. As we come now to a time of offering and offer to giving our tithes and offerings, what better way to share in the expectation of what God can do through the little seeds of our gifts, our tithes and our offerings, to be blessings such as illustrated to our, our, from by our seniors today to each and every one of us. So we join with me and let us pray for our tithes and our offerings to be a blessing in our church, in our community, in the world. Let's pray. Gracious God, we thank you. For the mystery of how you work in our lives, taking the small things and making them grow. So, Lord, we do pray with our generous hearts as we give our tithes and offerings to you. Would you bless them and use them in this church and in our ministry to the community and the world to share your love, your grace, so that others may hear and know and those seeds that are planted may continue to grow in their lives and bear fruit to plant seeds in others. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen.
Before our closing hymn, we want to take just a minute to share with you the slideshow that will be used in our next service as we um, have all of the seniors stand up to be recognized. You are important in their lives because you will continue praying for them as they head on to this next chapter. And so we want you to see the, the faces and the plans of those who have chosen to be a part of our worship today. And I hope that as you leave, you'll see that some of them have some tables set up to kind of share about their journey and to talk about their plans for the future. So here are our seniors. Now, won't you stand and join me as together we sing our closing hymn. What a joy to worship together today. I look forward to seeing all of you next Sunday at 10 a.m. as we have a one service opportunity for us to join together as one body of Christ with our confirmands. There's so many ways that this church is supportive in, in doing the faith journey together. And if you were looking for a faith family, for someone to be a part of, we would love to have you as a part of First Rowlett. I would love to talk to you after the service. You can stop by the welcome booth. You can talk to any of the staff members. And we would love to talk to you about church membership or, or anything related to any of your faith journeys. It's, it's an awesome privilege to get to walk through life together. It's an important part of what we do. And so today we celebrated the seniors. We've got ways for that to continue. I know many of you are being a part of the golf tournament today for our scholarship, the Mike Klepper scholarship that will be awarded to some of our seniors. Thank you for that. We have a photo booth out here. You don't know what a photo booth is, maybe, but it's an opportunity to take a picture. You don't even have to take a selfie. There's lots of us around that can help. But we want to support our seniors, and we want to get the word out in the community that things are happening here at the church. So stop by. We've got balloons where you can hold up your year of graduation and say, post on social media that you support our seniors. And, and I remember my graduation, too. Or, or don't, or just make up a year and confuse everybody. However you want to do that is fine. 
but uh, we want uh, the community to know that things are happening here. So take that chance to share, um, to share some of what's happening inside our walls so that we can reach those outside of our walls. So as we go forth with that in mind, sharing the love of Christ with others, I want you to look around to your brothers and sisters in Christ. Let's bless one another as we go forth. Will you join me in the benediction? May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen.